numero 8, judge number 8, Mario Park, Kankaanranta, Finland. Tuomari numero 9, judge number 9, Åsa Lundbeck, Sweden. Welcome to Espo in Finland for day two of the International Skating Union's Grand Prix Espo, the fifth of six stops on the ISU's Grand Prix Senior Series. A chance to look at all four disciplines in which medals will be decided and skaters vie to achieve the spots at the Grand Prix final taking place in China next month. And look at this beautiful city situated on the northern shore of the Gulf of Finland bordering with the capital city in Helsinki. Finland's second most populous city as we see the Metro Arena in Espo, home to the Finlandia Trophy earlier this year on the Challenger Series and also the location for this year's European Championships which took place in January. And now in its second consecutive year hosting a Grand Prix event The arena primarily used for ice hockey, but it's also been used as the arena for Finland's national selection process for the Eurovision Song Contest. So a multi-purpose facility and now home to some incredible skating and we will see world champions competing here with junior world champions in ice dance and the senior world champions, Madison Chalk and Evan Bates. That will be the final event of the day preceded just by the women's event with Kaori Sakamoto, the reigning women's world champion who currently leads the field after yesterday's short program. But first, we will see the men's event. Two Japanese competitors atop the results from yesterday. And there's some Finnish skaters. Finland, the Finnish Skating Federation choosing to place the ice dance event at the end of today's competition schedule, presumably because uh, the competition with most chance of home success with Yulia Turkia and Matthias Verslus currently in the bronze medal position. A skating nation that has such huge success in the synchronized skating discipline. And if you haven't seen already some of the world's best synchronized skaters, check out the Finnish team's Marigold Ice Unity Team Unique and the Rockettes in the past who have all been world synchronized skating champions trained in this nation. But first, it will be the men here and Finnish skater Makar Suntsev will lead the event. He had a beautiful piece of choreography to the Moonlight Sonata yesterday but struggled to the jumping passes. And the final competitor, Kao Miura, the junior world champion he leads his compatriot Shun Sato by just over three points. There the judging lineup. And the technical panel too. As I mentioned, results will be decided in all four disciplines. And then tomorrow we can look forward to the exhibition gala performances. And Makar, since he uh, closes his eyes in front of the spotlight, one opportunity for him to compete at a home Grand Prix assignment. It's the first six men are introduced to the ice. And nice to see Makar looking so happy to take his place. United States of America, Liam Tapekis. 
And the first of eight warm-ups today underway. Perhaps just in the corner of the shot, you can see the Ukrainian flag part of the way for Ivan Shmuradko. Fascinating skater who chooses to use skating as his art form and ability to express himself out of his nation. But first, it will be Makar Sintsev, the 18-year-old high school student born in Perm. A skater who has attempted but hasn't landed a clean triple axel in competition. Interesting to see the same as yesterday and working sacco takeoffs within the spins, just working on the technique, rotational exercises to prepare himself. The jumping passes ahead as we look now to Arlet Levandi. 17 year old has a fascinating story, but the inspiration and muse for his free skate is, is Baikal, the name of the world's biggest lake situated in Siberia. And the costume has purple, like the spoken purple sand and water there. Your conscientious consideration for his composition. And now to Ivan Shmuratko, scheduled to compete at the Warsaw Cup Challenger Series event, which is taking place this weekend, but instead, opportunity to compete on the Grand Prix. He did the Grand Prix in France last year, Grand Prix de France in Angers, was eighth there. So we'll be hoping to replicate that kind of result, but the challenges that he has faced with his training location have been huge. So just by being assigned this event, a huge accomplishment. As you look to Liam Kapekis, a huge triple axel in the short program, masses of height. Just unfortunately couldn't stick the landing. You can see there with the triple flip double axel. Skater with springs in his legs. And hopefully, clean skate all round for him in the free skate. So we look to the German national champion Nikita Staroshtin. And interesting, he too working a single. One for Axel, all the techniques the skaters use in training. Just make sure their body alignment is optimal. And the jump technique that they will know will deliver the clean skates. As he steps up into a double axel. With the triple axel to come. Had a clean free program at the Finlandia Trophy here. He's going to be hoping the same kind of clean skate. As he looked to the winner of the Junior Grand Prix final last year, Nikolai Mamola, competed in France. A shoulder dislocation in the warm up for his short program obviously derailed his mental and physical preparation. So he was so grateful to the national team doctor. He strapped him up on site. Hopefully, no such signs of injury for Nikolai today and in Finland. There will be 12 elements for the men in their four minute free skate and, and the women's free skate length the same. Nice quad loops triple toe from Nikolai Mamola. We'd love to replicate that at the end of this group. Three spins, 
step sequence, a choreographic sequence. And the outstanding jumping elements, which will be dictatorial in result. Some of the skaters here not comfortable to include triple axel yet. Later, as the event progresses, we will see more quadruple jumping attempts. Already, though, in this one up, you can see the most difficult quadruple jumping pass attempted in this event will be the quadruple loops that used by Nicolai Mamola, the Italian. Big debate in the skating fraternity about the value assigned to some of the jumping passes with the quad axle that Ilya Malinin has used to gain such fame and respect, not perhaps given the high base value that some believe it definitely worthy of, and that the reason that he didn't use that in his second Grand Prix assignment. common rotational exercise to take the backspin position, that the rotational position that the skater is using in the air, and that's the backspinning. Very regular and common practice for the skaters to assume just to connect the body on the ice with the position that they want to achieve and replicate in the triples and quads ahead. And great shot there of a very well-centered spin from Shomaratko. to conclude his warm-up. So the first of the eight warm-ups of the day, now over 60 meters in length by 30 meter in length, Olympic size ice rink. Gets ready for the first competitor of the day. On the ice representing Finland, Makar Sundsev. Last Parting wisdom from his coach, Tatiana Lebedeva, from Makar Sintsev. Makar said that skating to Japanese music has always been on his bucket list. And he told me that the music gives him power and literally helps him feel like a samurai. So he has some fighting spirit and success. Double flip to start, but then the Euler triple circle. Transition for the Unibar entry into the triple loop, but just a hand down. articulating and accenting so much of the music.
Finland's Makar Sinsev starts the men's free skate. And the skater from the host nation will be disappointed with the jumping passes, but is such a, a quality, well-rounded, fundamental skater and a program that had some amazing touches and ex acknowledging nuances in the music. As I mentioned before he started, he said that he has always had this style on his bucket list and you can see his interpretation of it continue right through to the bout. I'm just wondering, is it the increased pressure of it being a host nation event or perhaps because this, a senior Grand Prix assignment is more prestigious, just preventing him from being able to deliver on the technical content. Doesn't seem to be a lack of technique on takeoffs. But what we can't account for is the mental pressure that can affect timing. Here, what would have been triple flip, just a double, and then regrouping and managing the oiler into the triple saco. Of which you can see good technique, good flow on the landing. And although the lack of triple axle, the triple axle is somewhat of a, a prerequisite necessity to be competitive at a senior men's international event of this caliber, I do think that he has many other attributes that would be better perhaps than many of those left to skate in the event. And hopefully this experience will motivate his return to training. Great to see some of the replays of transitions that were both unique, complex, and difficult. Coupled up with that Ina Bauer, which he used effectively as a difficult entry to that camel spin. Good to see, still some buoyant, positive energy in the kiss and cry from Makar and his coach Tatiana Lebedeva. They've done really good work on the skater here and now hopefully more experiences of these high pressure events allow him to showcase the talent that he has with more success. So 107.56. Over a month ago, he had 132 points in his free skate in this arena. Hopefully, he will return to that level and better as the season progresses for Makar. And now another skater who is still eligible to compete at the junior ranks, 17-year-old Arlet Levandi. Turns 18 in 10 days' time. Skating to the music by Carl from Don La Forêt de Sibérie. story is that Arla is stranded in the desert of the frozen lake. <laughs> Opening with double axle. combination that Makar was hoping for, more success for Arlet with triple flip, Euler, triple saco.
Wonderful change of edge, Inabar into double axle, followed up by a back spiral. Success is triple it's triple toe. Good body movement throughout in the transitions. Well, a wonderful skate for Arlette Levande, the Estonian 17-year-old. As he takes his way to center ice, just realizing what he has just delivered in the Metro Espo Arena. Amazing to see a skater so committed to storytelling. The first note his mother explained depicts how he realizes the emptiness surrounding him and the program showing his fight with nature. And you, if you didn't know the story, you could certainly tell from the movement and the commitment and conviction to it, Arlet was invested in the theme for his free skate. He had a fall on the triple flip and didn't make a combo in the short program. That costly to him. Two triple flips today. This in Euler with triple soccer, good elevation on the second jump. The technical panel choosing to review some of the elements in the takeoff edge, something they're looking at on the flips and loses. That body movement, so reminiscent of the work done by his choreographer Ben Wadi Show. Multi dimensional movement, trying to encourage more program component scores from the judges, taking his body core. Off balance. In the triple loops, triple toe. Tech panel deciding that big jumping pass, a quarter of a rotation short on the second jump. And that in turn is a reduction for errors for the judges. Again, more of that body movement, really working his body core off axis. So much repetition there in the back inside loop of the left foot. Again, the arch through his spine and his back. This takes so much repetition. And there, a gorgeous moment for mother and son. His mother, as I mentioned yesterday, the world silver medalist in 1984. And his father, an Olympic medalist, and a Nordic combined skier. So, parents of the elite caliber 
So he competed at the Dennis 10 Memorial just a few days ago and had 141. It's 134 points here. And whatever Anna Lavanda just mentioned to him, he seems to accept is the reason why. Score a little bit lower here. But it's okay. <laughs> Well, uh, that's fun to see as if we're at an athletics meet. Ivan Shmuratko encouraging the applause in anticipation of his performance from the audience. A 21 year old skating to Ukrainian music that he is so very proud to perform to. He will open with Triple Axel, which he fell on in the short program. Lands the triple axel today. Followed up with triple flip, triple toe.
his trademark split slide to conclude the program as part of his choreographic sequence. Ivan Shmurako from the Ukraine. The free skate set to the 80s song, Skripka Hara. And the words of the song are, the violin is playing, the heart is aching, the summer is ending. And Ivan's message is one of resilience. He said that the violin continues playing and life goes on for me and for any Ukrainian. Our life continues, just like the soldier status. We're fighting for you to live. And he said, and we need to live to do our jobs and help them. And the skating community has been so appreciative of Ivan's performances and so respectful of his choice to choose his skating as a way to speak. Now he has returned to the Ukraine, training back in his home country since March of this year, not with the optimal training conditions that he would like. As we see him have more success on the axle than he had in the short program. And then followed that up with this, the triple flip in combination with the triple toe. Not lots of positive bullet points for the grade of execution to take the value of the technical element score higher, but nevertheless cleanly performed for so many, apart from a flip, a big pop on one of his intended triple flip jumps. And the yellow leaves on his free skate costume symbolize the autumn mentioned in the song. Costume design by Ivan himself. Indeed, costume design by himself, as was the free skate choreographed by he too. Here, the movement that we've seen from him before looks so comfortable, and yet requires such balance. Really interesting to see how the judges recognise the presentation. Component score for Ivan. And from what I can see, it looks like that is the highest of his three component scores. And of course, his message all more pertinent when he holds the flag of his home nation. So 134.37 lower than his season's best and Andre Neppel Memorial, perhaps the, that the reason why he looks perplexed in the kiss and cry. But nevertheless, Shmuratko leads the field still. Next to skate represents United States of America, Liam Kapekis. And now to Liam Kapekis, the 19 year old. Skating the music, The Boxer by Jerry Douglas. The first quad attempt. Sako. Just pops the triple axle. Not the start that Liam was hoping for. Time just the double axle, one to two triples back to back. More success with the triple, it's triple toe. 
For a pocket full of mumbles, such our promises. All lies and jest, still the man he is what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. When I left my home and my family, I was no more than a boy in the company of strangers in the quiet of the railway stations, running scared, laying low, seeking out the poor quarters where the ragged people go. Is only they will know. Well, I don't A great music choice, not often heard in the competitive arena. And a piece that Liam's choreographer, Joey Russell, said that Liam did a lot of research on himself to perform to, so invested in the music choice. That said, Liam, of course, will be disappointed with the mistakes. And the first three elements in his planned program content made it really hard for him to maintain optimism and positivity, knowing that it would be a difficult score for a skater who did so well at the Skate Canada International, relatively. And his personal best achieved in Vancouver just a few weeks ago. And Liam's goal definitely to try to make the Four Continents team and the World Championship team for US figure skating as we see the opening quad style. And a little short of rotation coupled with the fall. Certainly a skater, very capable, transitional difficulty like that outside Spread Eagle into Triple Axel. Not easy, but unfortunately today it feels sufficiently comfortable to rotate either of the Triple Axels, perhaps affected by the mistake on that element in the short program yesterday. And even the triple flip there, although well, well salvaged, didn't look comfortable for Liam. It's not his optimal day. There will be three spots for American men at the World Championships thanks to the successes of Elia Malinan and Jason Brown last year. He will be vying to be selected to compete in Montreal at the World Championships, the Yes Nationals in Columbus, Ohio in January. And hopefully lessons learned from this experience for Liam. Very supportive coaching staff from the Connacht Skating Club. Yeah. Mantra is to develop athletes from learn to skate program to the international stage. 
and seems to do that in a very holistic manner, caring about the human as well as the athlete. So you see his coach Keegan Murphy with him in the case of cry. So 127.84, given the mistakes, Liam seems satisfied with that. Liam just drops behind Ivan Shmuratko into second place. And now to Nikita Starostin. He couldn't believe it when he heard just a few days ago that he would be competing in the Grand Prix. A goal that he has had for such a long time. He said it has been a dream of his to compete on this stage. Opening triple flip, followed up by a ball in the triple axel.
Well, Nikita Staroshtin, German champion, completes his free skate. Not the clean free program that he had in this venue at the Finlandia Trophy. But looking yes. like he's embracing and relishing every second of his time on the ice now. Taking a moment to appreciate the respect shown to him from the audience who so enjoyed, obviously, the music. I want it that way and larger than life, not music. I think that we see in the competitive skating community often, if at all. But again, <laughs> finding the camera, saying hi to everybody and embracing these moments. The triple axel, the second element of the program, paved the way for a skate less than he would have hoped for and appeared a little fatigued. The jumping pass that he did beyond that, just a little tighter than he would have liked. You can see the running edge on the triple triple, not as long as would be optimal. But nevertheless, participation in the Grand Prix with music like this and the energy that he has, well, I'm sure accrue him more and more fans. As you see part of the choreo sequence. The lyric was down. The knee slide showcased it perfectly within the choreography. Not sure the vocal lyric for the butterfly, but I'm sure it was on point. And it was music that Adam, his choreographer, was choreographing a musical piece to at the Royal Conservatorium in Brussels for his musical students that Nikita heard and then consequently asked if he could use it on the ice for his free skate this season. And the feedback that he's had has been very positive for it. Ah, saying thanks to all those that have helped him, of course, including coaches Marina Shirsheva and Adam Soya. He's a very respectful young man, Nikita Staroshtin, 129.16. And although not what he was hoping for, maintains his place after the short program, at least. Natalie moving above Shmuradko from the Ukraine, from Ukraine. And now to the final competitor in this group. It's his birthday today, 20 years old. 20 years old today, Nikolai Memola. And they are again marking through the takeoffs that he wants to use successfully. Performed multiple quads in practice and post them on his social media. It's the quad loops that he intends to use twice at the start of this program. Possible two-footed landing on the quad loops, but still strong enough to put a triple toe at the end. There's one more quad loops planned.
Blacks are on music again. Possible touchdown of the left foot on the landing. Such a wonderful finish for Nikolai Mamola, the free skate that he used last season to success on the junior ranks. And great to see him smiling as he steps up from the ice to conclude this, his free skate. Fascinating character breaking through in the senior ranks in his second senior Grand Prix assignment this year. And I noticed after the short program yesterday, so many remarking on his amazing statuesque height it reminds me a little of Evan Lysacek, the 2010 Olympic champion. Evan was listed as six foot two inches tall, 188 centimeters. Nikolai taller still, 195 centimeters. And wonderful to see somebody breaking traditions and expectations that certain body shapes are only capable of doing certain technical achievements. Quad jumps from Nikolai abundantly delivered in practice. Quad looks today. And there's much more to come from him based on what we've seen on his social media. And as with that Olympic champion, regarded as an incredibly hard worker by those that train alongside him. You see a little bit of pre-rotation, a little bit of question mark over the edge, but actually no tap of the left foot at all. So my apologies to Nikolai. No two-footed landing at all on that opening element. The base value of that comes in at 15.7 points. Unfortunately, couldn't repeat that on the second quad loops, but you can see there's no question about the rotation. Comfortably fully rotated. And I've seen, I think, quad loop from him in practice as well. So there, the triple loop, just comparative ease. Seems very driven, passionately committed to pursuit of success. Just off the podium at Junior World Championships. And hearing him talk about his desire to increase his technical content suggests that he has a clear vision of what it will take to be successful on the senior circuit as well. Many pointing out that he actually has different brands of skate from his left foot to his right foot. It's not comfortable with the skates that he had and very unique to see a skater having a different brand of skate from left to right. He obviously knows his own mind, knows what's necessary. And it's exciting to see him develop as a senior as he celebrates his 20th birthday. What 
a relief to see a skater celebrating their birthday with a skate that they seem to be very happy with. So often the pressure of competition is bad enough, but then to commemorate a birthday whilst performing such an arduous task as a free skate, pretty intense. This was 149.14 points for Nikolai Mamola. Now, hopefully, some birthday celebrations shared between he and his mother and coach, Olga Romanova. So, an Italian leads the field after the first warm-up group, Nikolai Mamola, by over 20 points ahead of Germany's Nikita Staroshtin and Ivan Shmaratko from Ukraine. So looks the next and final six men to compete, opened by another Italian skater. So Matteo Rizzo has 73.37 points after his short program. Just with a fraction of a point above him, Kevin Amos. But both of those skaters would have been hoping to come away with another medal in their second Grand Prix assignment and be considered in contention for a spot at the Grand Prix final. They've left themselves some work to do as we see Matteo. To think fast on his feet in the short program after mistaking the opening quad toe, changed his planned program content, and elected to simplify. But he's acknowledged to gold skate after the short program. There's only seven points to third place. So obviously already aware of the gap between him and those above with a view to closing it. A skater that looked somewhat disconsolate in the kiss and cry after his short program, Kevin Amos. Last year, Kevin said that his goal is to skate his heart out, being himself and showing the world who he is. Yesterday, that passion and emotional interpretation was still evident, but unfortunately, mistakes. The quad toe wasn't enough to see him satisfied with any expression. He has a fantastic free skate too. The music by Maurice Rabel. Kashiro Shimada. A little disappointed with the scores in his short program. Immediately though, after his skate, acknowledging the places in which he can improve, focused on the grades of execution of his steps and the spins. But interestingly, he also said that mental control is very important in figure skating, and he feels calm in Finland. And the ankle injury is getting better. And now to Jimmy Ma, who I assume will be really pleased to find himself in medal contention after the short program, especially given the intense schedule that he has had in back-to-back -back assignments, having competed at the Cup of China. He was only ninth just a week ago. So if he can obtain a top half placement, at least, I'm sure he will come away 
happy from Est were satisfied. Such clean, clean landings. Shun Sato. Second here, last year, second at the Finlandia Trophy on the Challenger Series earlier this year. Second place after the short program. Can he do enough to turn golden? Then to the final competitor, the leader after the short program, Kao Mura. He told the press that he watched Shun's performance just before him, and they've spoken to each other, encouraging one another to both try to make the Grand Prix final. And he did say that Shun Sato's good performance was a motivation to him, and that he gave him power. And how wonderful to hear consistent respect and appreciation between compatriots as we've noticed on other Grand Prix assignments between the Japanese competitors. Had no value for the change set spin in a short program. <laughs> but <laughs> didn't need that element when he's got Kosakos as comfortable as that. The discussion point about that spin is that perhaps he wasn't low enough. Now the technical panel the criteria for them in a sit-spin position is that the upper part of the skating leg is at least parallel to the ice. So to have a no value assigned to a spin for a skater of that quality is a big surprise. Skaters, you have one minute remaining. Teo Rizzo, he acknowledging the fondness that he has for the arena having medals at the European Championships earlier this year. Nice quad loop from him. Kamura, the leader after the short program, also recognizing what an affinity he has with the Espo Metro Arena having won the Finlandia trophy. I mean, Kamura has already told the Japanese press that he wants to go to the Korean barbecue nearby and eat a lot of uh, meat as a treat after the event. So. <laughs> Great to hear the skaters' humanity over and above just their athletic prowess. Quad loop though, not comfortable. I did say that he's been practicing hard since Skate Canada on the quad loop. So, father of Walter Rizzo encourages his son. Matteo Rizzo, third at Skate Canada International in Vancouver. Skating the brilliant music, Fix You by Coldplay. Quad toe to start from a tail. When you lose something you can't replace. When you love someone but it goes to waste. Could it be worse? And just like in the warm up, a good quad loop too.
really strong performance so far. Triple H, triple toe. Just one more jumping pass. This is the most difficult one for him. It's Get Canada. Second triple axel. Just let us step out there. Such a difficult entry into it. Matteo Rizzo has a very happy daddy, his father, so excited by that skate. And similar to that which he delivered in his first Grand Prix in Skate Canada, mistakes in a short program backed up with a real comeback free skate in both of his Grand Prix assignments. Both of the opening quads so much more successful than yesterday. You can see the reaction to the fans. Fans who he's cultivated that will travel around with them and here his trademark knee slide to leave the ice. Confirming a skate worthy of that. Hmm. It's a gorgeous moment there. His coach Andre Otrek at home watching proudly, I'm sure Andre has been traveling around the globe with so many of the Grand Prix events to battle here with his son. And this is what paved the way for the great skate, the quad toe. Had challenges with yesterday. Gorgeous back running edge on the landing of that. Just moments before we saw the quad loop in the practice and the warm up. Just question whether or not it was deemed fully rotated. Will affect the base value of the element. This transition, which he does so well, is incredibly difficult. Back outside Twizzle, stepping up into the triple axel, but just like Vancouver, forcing with his step right there the judges to go on a negative grade of execution. But I think that man would have tens in every component and plus fives in every grade of execution for every element for his son. He said that there aren't stories behind either of his programs, but instead just that people should feel the music and the performance and create their own story in their head. <laughs> and if they can incite half of the passion of his father in the judges, then the presentation component will be strong.
Greetings to his mother, also competitive figure skater. Nice dancer with his father. Father Rizzo will need to lie down to relax and recover from that. He looks as exhausted as Matteo is. Be interesting to ask who felt it's a harder task to be the parent watching, living through the experience, or the skater, or dealing the physicality of a four minute free skate with two quads. At 171 in Vancouver, but at that event, the quad loop was called clean. So achieves a base value of 10.5, whereas here it was deemed under rotated. So base value is 8.4. And otherwise, very similar. As to with the short program, levels on spins lower than the other competitors. Level three on flying sit spin, change camel spin, and the change rate combo spin. <laughs> he doesn't want to wait and hang around for his scores. <laughs> the technical panel, just looking at the second triple axle that's just gone in the system. And now they're having a little look at the step sequence that's been given a level three to. So Whether or not he will qualify for the final remains to be seen, but certainly the feedback will be given to Matteo from the technical panel here to use as he advances towards the later part of the season. European Championships in Kaunas, Lithuania, where he will try to defend the silver medal that he achieved in this arena 10 months ago. But confirmation there that Matteo Rizzo is a popular skater on the circuit Fans coming to Espo to support him. <laughs> All that excitement in the arena at the end of his performance. Matteo trying to keep the energy of the arena buoyant for those yet to perform. 168, was hoping for more. It is a couple of points lower than Escape Canada. Maybe it's that under rotation of the quad loop. But certainly, Matteo Rizzo will be proud to be convincing leader in the domestic competition between two Italians. So from one European skating star to another, Kevin Amos. Unlike Matteo, Kevin didn't achieve a medal at Europeans, but went on to that fourth place finish at Worlds, leading to Bolero. Like Matteo, he opens with quad toe. Coach Sylvia Fontana already encouraging him ringside vocally. Transitional content, which is a single axle after the triple axle.
That was crucial, triple axel, over there, triple sako. Positioning out, disguising the little mistake on the landing of the triple flip. Well, that's the way to musically finish a program. So much intensity, the judges looked like she couldn't even look back in the eyes of Kevin Amos from France. A program that garnered so much respect and appreciation from skating fans when he performed it at the Skate America event. And similar to Matteo Rizzo in repeating the score that he achieved in his first Grand Prix assignment, and this is second. He said that his coaches wanted to skate to this music two years ago, and he said it was boring, and then went to the Paris Opera and cried the entire 20 minutes when the piece was playing, and immediately called his coaches to apologize to them for saying it was boring. Now, it is the backdrop to this brilliant choreography. Kevin, instrumental in his own choreography, creating transitions like this, also now working with the young skaters on their own choreography and a future ahead of him, I'm sure, as a successful choreographer when his competitive days are over. But as I said in the short program yesterday, he spoke to Nick McCarvel and explained that his competitive days, not scheduled to end till after the next Olympic Games, committed to 2026 in Milano Cardina. And the success of Adam Xiao Himfa, who leads the Grand Prix standings this year, hasn't deterred him, but instead buoyed him and said that they work together, French men's skating. Triple Axel Euler, Triple Sacco, maybe a little question mark in the rotation. <laughs> We've just seen Walter Rizzo, one very passionate Italian coach, cheating his son, Silvia Fontana, Fontana very passionate Italian coach, cheating her longtime student, Kevin Amos, and the relationship between them is as joyful and entertaining to watch ringside as his performances are on the ice. And this, the choreo sequence, just an amazing way to find the accents and the music at the end. And that poor judge. <laughs> Sylvia, as we so often see, moved to tears, so emotionally invested in Kevin's skating success. 181 at Skate America, 176. Presentation component score in the nines, composition in the nines. Skating skills a little bit lower, maybe not as fast as some others that we'll see. But nevertheless, another strong outing from the 26-year-old Frenchman. Sarah Vanna, Japanista, on the ice representing Japan, Koshiro Shimada. And now to Koshiro Shimada. He has been suffering with a right ankle injury, but explained that it is getting better. And hopes that the injury has affected his training, won't deter him from a clean skate here, Dance Macabre.
stepping out of his opening quad, the quad circle. Better on the quadruple toe loop. Man is a triple axel, falling on a double toe loop. Double axle at every landing. Just a little snatched. Dance Macabre, the music for Japan's Kashiro Shimada. Nice to see the smile on his face. Shimada. Albeit there were mistakes in the performance, he did say that he doesn't want to be affected by the jumps, but put in his energy into his artistry and tell a story this time, which he didn't feel he was able to do in France at his first Grand Prix assignment, and he regretted that. After the short program, he did explain that he isn't fully confident in his jumping passes due to the shortage of practice. So whilst the injury that he has suffered is getting better, the lack of practice time is a consequence of that. has affected his confidence in the jumps. And you can see that quite off axis on many of the jumping passes and a valiant bravery. And you can hear Coach Angelo Dolfini saying the last two jumps very good and a good job. And so that an indication that, yes, there were mistakes, but relative to what must be done in practice with his coaches, Angelo and Stefan Lambiel, this was a good outing for Kushiro. Certainly the quad toe, the best jump of all, an extra two points added to that because of the grade of execution deemed so positive by the judges. This... 
bit of a nightmare for him. He'll relive that double toe, frustrated. The easiest of all the jumps attempted. Kashiro did say that he felt the support of the audience and feels the support of his teammates too. He said that world champion Shoma Uno sends the messages too and they support each other as teammates across all the Japanese men. We saw them, as we watched Angelo Dolfini encouraging his student. We saw last week the three Japanese men competing in Chongqing at the Cup of China, performing together in the gala exhibition. There's such brilliant camaraderie and wonderful to know that a skating nation which produces the world champion and many of the best in the world that they are so very supportive of one another encouraging each other to achieve their best Shoma trains with Kashiro and Jean Perry one of the international skating union centers of excellence Interesting to hear Coach Dolfini saying the fighting spirit of the Axel. And saying that you went for it. So as we see a skater return from injury, that the positives, fighting spirit, going for things en route to returning to a quality that will hopefully help him achieve a world place from the Japanese Skating Federation. 140.63 for Kashiro Shimada. Next skater is from the United States of America, Jimmy Ma. And now uh, to Jimmy Ma. He's had a very, very busy two weeks. And although I'm sure he's likely to be in the exhibition gala, this is the final big hurdle. It's back to back Grand Prix assignments. planned quad toe. He has a second one intended immediately after the first. Crowd getting behind Jimmy Ma. Another pop jump that time. Single loop.
Well, you really feel for Jimmy Ma with a skate so plagued with errors throughout. And he said, following his performance in China a week ago, that his coach Olga had said all of his hurdles are mental challenges. And that he needs to get over these to make the world team. I mentioned earlier with Liam Kapika skating that there are three spots for American men at the World Championships and many vying for it. And Jimmy Ma certainly has the potential to achieve that participation, but the mental tenacity required to deliver under pressure is incomprehensible. And already we've heard from Kashiro Shimada, the previous skater, about mental control is very important in figure skating. And it's not something that is often mentioned. We see the outcome of practice often what is delivered in competition is not a reflection of practice because the brain space is so affected by the pressure of competition in front of the panel. And often it's a desperate desire to do well that has a negative outcome. So we see the, first, the fall on the second quad having popped the first. The every jumping pass having a reduction for error on the judges' chart. As I say, so often it's the desperation, the desire, the skaters' burning ambition to replicate what they do in practice under competition that conversely makes the timing change, tighten up, try too hard. Now you can see stepping out of the jump again, forcing the negative grade of execution. The sport, as costly as it is to receive the education and choreography and costuming and skates, all of the huge expenses of training at this level, to then add a sports mental coach or sports psychologist on top of that, not always possible for all. But hopefully, Jimmy Mack can do some more work on his mental preparation as he heads towards the US National Championships in Ohio in January. Certainly a really entertaining skater when the jumping passes are working hard to give that same level of performance output in the presentation when you know that you haven't been able to deliver technically. And I figure that the score that he's about to hear would help that brain space. Jimmy Ma Jimmy Ma. Very entertaining skater. Who we sincerely wish all our best to as he returns to Boston in his training base and his friends there to support him as he heads to more domestic events. On the ice representing Japan, Shun Sato. And now to Shun Sato. Second here a year ago, as I said in warm-up, second here a month ago at the Finlandia Trophy and second yesterday. Music, The Four Seasons by Vivaldi. Fantastic quad loops. There's a 
double circle after the Euler following the triple axle. This is a beautiful quad tour, triple tour to watch. He makes it look easy. Another quarto. Well, that's an emphatic statement to try to win a title on the Grand Prix series this year from Shun Sato. Just a brilliant, brilliant skate. Some near textbook jumping passes and some excitement in the Vivaldi music too for good program component scores from the 19-year-old. Wonderful performance dictating a skater that was obviously very, very prepared. He was disappointed with the call on the quad flip in the short program. Deemed a quarter short with an exclamation mark on the edge. Any frustration and disappointment. Channeled brilliantly for his free skate. A skater that when he was very young was planning to go skiing one day. It rained, couldn't go, and instead went to the skating rink in the Miyagi Prefecture and then recommended to go to Sendai as we look at the quad loots making it look effortless plus threes plus fours I'm sure likely to have been assigned to that from the judges and as he went then to the ice rink in Sendai he saw Izuru Hanyu practicing that incited and inspired skater to now be here competing the Grand Prix in Espo, delivering quad triple combinations, just like the great Yuzuru. Every jumping past that, the last, the triple loots, 
not just a positive grade of execution, but a significant enhancement on the technical score with the GOEs. It's worked. With Kenji Miyamoto and Guillaume Cizeron, the Olympic ice dance champion on his work choreographically. So the tech content being pushed with the components too. Still, it's his skating skills which are the highest. Judges almost half a point lower on his presentation and composition than his fundamental skating skills. I'm sure that will be developed as he achieves a new personal best. Now, I don't think there were any personal bests achieved by any of the men in the short program. Great to see Shun Sato breaking that tradition in this event with the first skater to achieve an ISU PV two points higher than what he achieved 12 months ago en route to silver in this arena. So it's going to be at least a silver again for Shun Sato with his friend and compatriot deciding if it will be anything more than that. And now to the leader after the short program. He achieved that lead even without any value assigned to his change sit spin. That would have been about three and a half to four points on that element alone. So another clean skate leads you to believe that this will be the champion, but we saw a fall on a quad loop in the warm up. That his first planned element for Kamura. Instead opens with Triple Axel Euler, Triple Salco. Quad toe, triple toe, tighter in the landing than Shinsato. Wonderful quad tackle. Continues to fight, holding the landing of the quad toe loop.
Kao Mura completes the men's event and he had three point lead over Shun Sato. You can see the top left hand corner of the screen. He's just about two and a half points short of Shun Sato on the tech score after that free skate. And the technical panel currently just reviewing some of the elements that may change. But wonderful to see his joy and satisfaction at that skate. Interesting to note the change planned program content. We saw him going for quad loop, which he's explained that he's been working on hard since he competed at Skate Canada. Fell on it in the warm up about 40 minutes or so ago and elected not to utilize it. Obviously, he and his team deciding that a clean skate was what was necessary if he was going to take the title here. He had stronger program component scores than Shun Sato in the short program, and I suspect that will be the same in the free skate, certainly from a presentation perspective. He was so committed at the end in his attack of Titan free skate. He loves the anime. He said that he likes the speed of the program as it resembles the anime character liner. And that is the muse for this free skate. When asked by his choreographer Shailen Bourne, what he enjoys and explain animation. She said, let's roll with that. Use that as the choice for this program. Triple Axel, Euler, Triple Salco. You can see just a little scratchy on the landing. We're having to really nitpick in an event where two Japanese men have skated so brilliantly. Again, a little bit heavy on the toe pick landing, but still manages to put triple toe at the end. Just not the grade of execution that we saw from Shun Sato. So Shun Sato's quad toe, triple toe had an extra 2.85 because of the quality of the element. Kamura just an extra point, 0 0.68. So it will be down to the wire as to whether or not Kamura has done enough to maintain the lead that he held after yesterday. And again here, just having to use his right arm to punch back and cling on to the landing. Koto was given a 1.36 extra, a 2.58 extra was given to Shun Sato on his Koto, so it really will be very, very tight. And wonderful though, as the competition is as intense as it is, as we look at yet another <laughs> judge's eye contact finish, to hear of the respect that they have for each other. And as I said, Kamiura said, following his short program, that Shun's performance in his short program before his inspired him and a motivation as he eagerly awaits his score so it's at 181 he knows already that despite the fact that it's second in the free skate soon we will see the overall ranking and I think it would like to be a number one beside it well, definitely now he knows. <laughs> so they may be friends, but definitely competitors. As Kao Miura, the Four Continents champion, takes the title in Espo Finland, his first Grand Prix title. Twice a silver medalist in 2022 on the Grand Prix series. And now a gold medal winner in Espo. So interestingly, same result as Finlandia Trophy for the Japanese competitors in first and second place. What an exciting finish to the men's competition. Congratulations to the winner of Espo Grand Prix, Miura Kao. あの、おめでとうございます。本当にあの、このたびは優勝をして、あの、まずご感想をお聞かせくださいませ。くりプリーズ First of all, a huge thank you to everybody who's been cheering for me today and always. In the past, I've experienced um, last minute uh, number twos and losses. Uh, yes, true, I was second in the short program, but this year I have won. 
そして、えー、フィンランドについてのご感想をお聞かせいただけますか、um, For our audience, let us see how he feels about Finland そうですね、まあ、フィンランドといえば、まあ、サウナが僕が一番かなって思うんですけど、まあ、僕、もう日本でオフの時とかはあのサウナに入るのが好きでよく入っているんですけど、まあ、今回、本場のフィンランドのサウナにまた、まあ、まだ一回も行ってないんですけど、入れればいいなって思います。Well, when we speak of Finland, we say sauna. On my time off, I do take、uh, saunas back in Japan.、Um, I know that there are a lot here in Finland. I still haven't been able to experience the real sauna, but I'm hoping that very soon I'll be able to. Hi. So, this is the way to go. I'm going to go. 続けるにあたってコメントいただけますでしょうか。Just one last comment for the continuation。何でもいいです。と今回あのグランプリファイナルに進むことがこれで決まったので、しっかりグランプリファイナルでも結果を残せるように帰ってからもしっかり練習したいと思います。Now with this, my Grand Prix prize,、uh, ticket to the Grand Prix final has been、uh, confirmed. I'd like to get back to Japan, practice, and make my way towards the finals. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful to hear from the champion Kamura following his win and confirmation that he will compete at the Grand Prix final in Beijing next month. So, congratulations to all the men's competitors. In an exciting first competition of fours, we back to Kevin Amos. He adds a bronze medal to the silver he achieved in Skate America. Such passionate skater to the bolero music. Indeed, Kevin Amos had that highest components by some way. But Shun Sato did enough technically to win the men's pre skate. Finds himself again as a bridesmaid runner up once more. His component scores being the focus for the rest of the season, I'm sure, as he pushes to take top spot in subsequent events. Kao Mura. Winner of this short program, second in the free skate. But by just over one point, takes the title above Shin Sato. Closing a fantastic men's free skate. I'm Mark and Reggie. Thank you for joining us for the first event of four. Make sure you stay tuned to see the pairs free skate coming up next.